Professor Johnson. That was a fascinating talk. I love this topic of the health economics for human milk and the incredible impact it has on society. And what I really would love to hear about is this connection, particularly between the economic benefits and the other benefits in the first thousand days of life. This window of opportunity the, in the first thousand days very closely coincides with the research from an economic perspective that has looked at early life interventions. And there's a growing body of research that is focusing on the importance of early life interventions because there is a much greater time to accrue the benefits and the benefits can build on each other. So what we do in infancy improves, improves outcomes in childhood and what we do in childhood improves outcomes in adulthood. And from an economic perspective, these interventions are building capabilities such as uh, productivity, mental health, physical health, and cognitive performance. And those capabilities that are built in infancy and childhood can accrue over a lifetime. So when uh, Professor German said that most of the health research has focused in the past hundred years really on fixing problems for middle-aged men. I mean, what is, what is the ratio now currently to the investment that's made at that level for fixing things much, much later in life and the investment that's made in this preventive measure stage at the very beginning of life? As we look at interventions to improve health, I would guess that the vast majority of research is still either focusing on secondary prevention, interventions to improve health after a health problem has occurred like diabetes or heart disease, rather than primary prevention that is targeted at designing, that is targeted at preventing something from ever occurring. We need, from a societal perspective, to be investing more of our funds into research, into the primary prevention aspects, such as breastfeeding, because the return on investment can accrue over the entire lifespan. What do you think it's going to take to get, I don't know, policymakers, insurers, and multiple other stakeholders to take that view and really start to put action behind some of the words that have been spoken about that? Because we've been talking about preventive care for quite a long time. While we've been talking about preventive care for, for an extremely long time, a lot of the focus has either been on the outcomes or been on the cost. And from a stakeholder perspective, we have to be able to, to speak to the various stakeholder needs. And by looking at value, taking into account the cost per outcome achieved, I think we can better address um, the questions and concerns from policymakers' perspectives, clinicians, um, and individual mothers' perspectives by looking at the, the overall value of breastfeeding. When you say the value of breastfeeding, you mean putting things in bottom line terms that they can understand so that they can see that there's going to be a definite benefit and outcome and it's going to be a financial outcome and not just a health outcome, which is kind of difficult to gauge. Is that what you mean? So as we look at value, value takes into account an improvement in the outcome. Uh, a reduction in a neonatal morbidity, a reduction in childhood diseases. By looking at the return on investment of different interventions mm -hmm. to improve breastfeeding, we can better speak to or speak the language of policymakers, of clinicians, mm -hmm. of hospital administrators, and of mothers. How many more economists like you do we need to be able to, uh, to make a really solid case for breastfeeding and a number of other of, uh, early life interventions, do you think? We are in the early phases of understanding the value and the cost effectiveness of breastfeeding. Uh, human milk economics is a growing field and we need more economists 
to get involved and to lead research in this area so that we really can tackle all of the burning questions, not only from a health perspective, but from the different countries' perspectives that oftentimes the cost might, uh, might vary in some way, that having more detailed perspectives and analyses will be extremely helpful. You talked about the opportunity costs for the mother, and I think those are substantial, actually, and maybe underestimated in people's minds unless they themselves have been breastfeeding mothers. And I wonder how, how much farther do you think we need to go to be able to incorporate those into an economic model like yours? Much of the research to date has focused on the health system costs. And although, although the health system costs are critical to understand, the mother's opportunity cost or the value of her time spent breastfeeding is probably the most important barrier for long-term success in breastfeeding. As we think about the trade-offs that a mother makes as she's breastfeeding, uh, she has to make the decision whether to spend time breastfeeding or sleeping or cooking or taking care of her other children. And all of these trade-offs that the mother has to make go into her ultimate decision of how long she will breastfeed. While we are starting to include the opportunity cost in more and more research, I think this is a really a growing area that we need to focus more on and think about how do we reduce the barriers to the mom in terms of her time. Uh, a couple of months ago, there was a study in the UK, a very small study, where they said, the headlines read, cash for breastfeeding. But in fact, they offered some coupons uh, to get various breastfeeding products, I think. Mm -hmm. And the breastfeeding rates went up 6% in this little, little study. I could envision a time where moms under uh, either certain circumstances or for, uh, for certain durations of time are compensated for breastfeeding. We already compensate mothers for, for providing donor milk. As we look at the neonatal intensive care unit, where the evidence is so clear about the short-term benefits of human milk, we could envision compensating moms for providing milk in the first 14 days or for a critical window to reduce the incidence of um, expensive and chronic neonatal morbidities. And potentially deadly. And potentially deadly. I could envision a time where we're compensating moms to provide breast milk during critical windows of time during the neonatal intensive care unit stay when infants are most vulnerable to deadly uh, neonatal morbidities. But exclusive breastfeeding for six months, that's, a, that's quite a stretch to pay a mother for that. From a, from a societal perspective, we would be making a decision to allocate resources towards incentive, uh, compensating mothers mm -hmm. to breastfeed for six months versus other health or public health initiatives. Mm -hmm. Finite resources. Finite resources. Mm -hmm. Wherever we look, we're making decisions either explicitly or implicitly on how to allocate scarce resources. Well, let's hope you can justify an investment very soon in human milk as a primary public health intervention. I think it's a marvelous goal. Thank you very much, Professor Johnson. Thank you for inviting me.